Hey guys, today on Cooking with Carby, we're going to be taking a look at creamy chickpea pasta. Let's get started. First, we're going to finely chop two shallots. I like to start by cutting off the end and then slicing horizontally through the root before I attempt to take the peel off. This should help, but as you can see here, I kind of struggled anyways. Shallots are kind of like the offspring between an onion and a garlic. Similar to an onion, but come in bulbs like garlic, offering a flavor that's a mixture of both. They're great for sauces because they're gonna break down a lot more easily than onion and we're not gonna be left with big chunks in our sauce. Starting with vertical cuts almost to the root before rotating 90 degrees, using a claw grip with my off hand so that I don't slice my fingers off, and finally chopping. The same principles as any of the other onions we've cut. Set them aside in a bowl while we complete the rest of our mise en place. Which begins with the continued battle with the garlic. Separating two cloves, we're going to first cut off the woody little nub at the end. Nobody wants to chew on those later on during their meal. And then we are pressing down on each clove with our blade. Remember sharp end facing away from our palm. No time for a happy little accident here. And then running our blade loosely over top. We're not going for a fine chop here, just a quick one. On to our fresh rosemary. Unlike some other herbs we've used, we don't have to be as gentle with these ones, and we're trying to mince it into almost a powder. We're aiming for a quarter of a cup here. You can use dried as an alternative, but you'll notice the difference with fresh. We're reserving a couple pinches on the side for garnish, and then putting the rest into a small ramekin, adding a couple twists of crushed red pepper flakes. One full bundle of asparagus, a good trick is to store it in the fridge in a mason jar filled with a little bit of water. Helps to keep them nice and crisp. Remove them from the... Remove... Remove... Wait... Re, remove... Come on. Uh, here we go. Remove them from the mason jar, a few at a time, and then snapping off the ends. Where it naturally breaks, if they're fresh, will remove all of that woody stem. Line up your spears so that... Whoops. Lining them up makes it a little easier to chop them into nice, uniform, about one inch segments. Set these aside in a bowl as well. Always attempt to keep a clean kitchen. Make some clutch asparagus kitchen shots. Now we are grating about a cup worth of Parmigiano Reggiano. Some of this is going to be used to thicken our sauce and the rest is going to be used as garnish. Next up is one large can of chickpeas. We're draining away the liquid, which is actually called aquafaba, and can be used as an egg replacement in a lot of baking recipes, whipped up like meringue or in cookies. Over to the stove, we're preheating a large saute pan with a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. Once it starts to shimmer, we're going to add in our shallots and garlic followed by our rosemary and red pepper flakes, and a couple of twists of pepper, and a pinch of salt. Let those heat up in the pan and give it a little mix so everything gets incorporated. You may need to add a little more olive oil just to keep it from burning. After about one minute, we're going to add in our can of chickpeas, mixing to incorporate. This would be a good time to start boiling your salted water as well. After the chickpeas have sat undisturbed for about five minutes, they're going to start to squeal and pop, and we're going to mix once to reveal some browning on the bottom of the pan before we deglaze with about a half of a cup of white wine. Deglazing lets us scrape all of that extra flavor off the bottom. Now that our water is boiling, we can add in one pound of pasta. I like rigatoni as there's a lot of nooks and crannies for our sauce to get into, but linguine works well too. Back to our chickpeas, we can see that most of the liquid has reduced, so we can add our asparagus in, reducing the heat a touch. We're going to add the zest of one lemon. Notice that I'm rotating the lemon after a couple of passes on the microplane. This is to avoid getting any of the bitter pith into our pan. We are only going to cook the asparagus for about a minute before adding the pasta, as we want it to remain crunchy. When the pasta is just shy of al dente, give it a quick mix to incorporate before adding just about one cup of our pasta water. The salty, starchy water is going to not only add flavor, but it's also going to act like a glue between our pasta and the sauce, as well as thickening once we add our cream. In go the cherry tomatoes you saw at the beginning. Careful not to break any of them open while mixing. They're going to be flavor bombs and a burst of color in the finished dish. Now we can add most of the grated Parmesan, reserving just enough to top our finished plates. Now I'm adding one cup of heavy or whipping cream, something around 35% milk fat, before mixing to have everything turn into a nice velvety smooth cream sauce. Let it go for a couple of minutes and reduce your heat until everything is evenly coated. Taste to check your seasoning, add a pinch of salt or a couple of twists of pepper as necessary, 
give it another taste, and if it's past the quality assurance check, then you're ready to start plating. I'm garnishing with some of that reserved rosemary, a sprinkle of parmesan, a squeeze of lemon juice, and a twist of red pepper flakes. And there we go, the dish is finished. It's time to dig in. Make sure on your first bite you get a little bit of everything. One of those tomatoes to burst, a piece of asparagus, a noodle with a lot of that sauce. Delicious. I really enjoy this dish because other than a couple of fresh ingredients, the rest of it are just pantry staples. You can swap the asparagus and tomatoes for zucchini or spinach. You can change the pasta type or switch to gnocchi instead. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe learned something. Stay tuned for my next one. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe.